am Cindy Matsuki, host of International Hawaii, showcasing Hawaii's import and export businesses, as well as relevant small business topics to help our, our Hawaii small businesses, especially now during this time. Today, my guest is Wayne Layugan, Senior Project Manager of Innovate Hawaii. And he's, that's a program within HTDC, the Hawaii Technology Development Corporation. So to start off, hi Wayne, thanks for joining me. <laughs> hi Cindy, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Can you do like a brief intro of yourself and maybe Innovate Hawaii? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so again, Wayne Laigan, Innovate Hawaii. I'm a senior project manager there. Um, primarily, we help small, medium-sized manufacturers as part of the Innovate Hawaii program. Uh, Innovate Hawaii is a part of the state and also a part of a federal program called the Manufacturing Extension Partnership. So this is where you know our manufacturing expertise comes in. We're part of a nationwide network. There's uh, 50 centers like ours in every state and Puerto Rico. And again, our, our main focus is uh, around small, medium-sized manufacturing. Nice. Um, so our goal here is to, to let people know about the PPE grant. So yep. maybe could you give us some background on what the grant is? Yeah, so um, ACDC was uh, appropriated $10 million of CARES Act funds by the state legislature. So, I mean, first of all, thank you to the state legislature for crafting this program and supporting local manufacturing. And the program goals is to increase Hawaii's manufacturing capacity of cleaning supplies and PPE in the event that the import supply chain is disrupted due to global escalation of COVID-19 cases. So, you know, I think we've all seen it, you know, early on when, when uh, the pandemic first started, right? Everyone was scrambling to find, you know, cleaning supplies, PPE. So mm -hmm. this is in response to that. And then, you know, just, just to go get it out in the beginning, you know, when, when I mentioned PPE, I know by definition, you know, it's, it refers to protective clothing, helmets, gloves, face shields, goggles, face masks, all those things that, you know, protect the wearer from either injury or the spread of illness. Uh, in this case, when I mentioned PPE in regards to this program, it also includes cleaning supplies and disinfectants. Oh, very good. And how much funding did HTDC receive? And how much can companies receive from the grant? Yeah, so um, 10 million in total was appropriated for HTDC for this grant program. Um, <clears throat> as far as um, for each company, uh, companies can apply up to 500,000 uh, in funding. And, you know, it's, it's uh, additional funding could be requested, but then there is, you know, additional things that the company would need to provide in order for uh, HCDT to approve that amount. Okay, so how do they, like what kind of documentation do they need to get the funding? Like they just need to present their plan of expansion or pivot or? Um, yeah, so um, the application is available online. Uh, everyone can go to hcdc.org. They'll see a huge banner talking about uh, PPE. Uh, innovation grants, uh, they click on that, it'll bring them to the landing page, which has um, all the info on the grant, as far as uh, a button that'll take you to the online application. Um, because this is a state funded grant, uh, we do have to follow, you know, state requirements. Uh, so one of those is Hawaii Compliance Express. So for companies who aren't familiar with that, that's a document that proves that the company is compliant with, you know, um, with, with Hawaii, you know, Department of Labor, Department of Tax, uh, DCCA, and the uh, federal IRS. So that document that you submit to us will prove that you are in a compliance status. Um, other than that, other required stuff would probably be your uh, things that we need to create your vendor account, a state vendor account. Um, that would, would usually just be a, a blank invoice that has a company name, company address, and their federal employee number. Um, in the application, and you can go into more detail. I don't know if you wanted to go the, into the, the weeds about that, but there's, there's other documents too that we we'll ask for. Uh, it's highlighted in the application. Uh, one thing that I like to call out is um, a budget uh, table or, or a, and a budget narrative, as well as a company financials. So we're asking for a profit and loss statement and balance sheet from 2019, and then whatever you have current to date um, for this year. Okay, and so what types of expenses qualify for the grant? Yeah, so I mean, uh, the types of grants that we, we, that we uh, hope to award would be grants for, you know, Hawaii manufacturers to 
pivot toward and or scale up uh, PPE manufacturing operations. Uh, other grants could be for, you know, to produce medical use PPE or even um, innovative grants for Hawaii small businesses that can demonstrate, you know, viable solutions to yeah. assist with the PPE supply chain. Um, as far as, you know, use of funds, uh, specifically, you know, grants can be used for, you know, purchase of manufacturing equipment, uh, training of employees, uh, for example, like, you know, we understand that, you know, some of the machinery that, that equipment that, that you would purchase would need um, additional training or upskilling of your employees. So those costs would be eligible. Uh, wage compensation uh, for employees of the business that relates to the PPE operation. So we're not funding the whole company, just the part that produces the PPE and as well as uh, other expenses related to PPE also. Wow, that's really good. Yeah. And did the state legislature decide that this was the best use of the CARES Fund Act? Um, yeah, because- how, I mean, how was that determined? I think, I think, you know, early on, we saw, you know, the shortage, we saw, you know, the impacts to our supply chain, right? Even though mm -hmm. there, there were companies, <clears throat> you know, outside of Hawaii that could produce the PPE, um, mm -hmm. people, people, businesses uh, were having a hard time getting those in here. You know, there, there was a huge delay. I'm sure, I'm sure everyone went to Costco, to Target, they saw the line, they saw the empty shelves, you know, so I think, I think, you know, I think right now we understand that, you know, many businesses are in economic distress. You know that the current business environment is tough so you know what we really hope is that the grant will help businesses um and not and not hurt it you know companies need to understand you know what what they're able to do uh, mm -hmm. which is why you know if they have questions about the grant if if whatever they're doing would qualify or not uh, encourage uh companies to email ppe at htdc.org um for th those type of things and we'll, we'll get back to them as soon as we can Good. Is there like a priority of PPE or cleaning supplies that's needed or is it just anything? Or do you know what the biggest shortage is in Hawaii? I, it's hard to say because it changes, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I think from, from uh, recently, what I've heard is uh, disinfectant wipes is one mm -hmm. that, you know, everyone is having a hard time because I think masks, uh, those have, have sort of caught up, um, but it's still in demand, I think. Um, on our website and in the application, you know, we will ask companies to specify what type of PPE um, they'll be able to manufacture. So caps, gowns, again, coveralls, gloves, uh, surgical masks, respirators, even fabric masks. So if you think of the simple ones that, that the general population would wear, uh, those would all be uh, considered PPE under this grant. Uh, face shields, hand sanitizers, uh, cleaning supplies. And there's also other categories. So if there's something that we're not aware of that you think would help the community and can be manufactured here in Hawaii, uh, we encourage you to apply and then, you know, explain to us you know, what, what the solution is and why it's a good solution for Hawaii. That's really good. And is it, do you have to be a manufacturing company to apply? Like say you just do sales or you import something, but you would like to start manufacturing. Could you apply for the grant? Yeah, so I, I can go over real quickly the, you know, some of the eligibility uh, requirements. So, I mean, I think obviously existing Hawaiian manufacturers that are simply modifying the operations to produce PPE. So, you know, we've probably seen, you know, a lot of distilleries now making hand sanitizer, <laughs> a lot of yeah. cut and sew operations making masks. So those would, would definitely qualify. Uh, if you're hoping to set up a new manufacturing operation, you know, uh, to manufacture PPE, like either you're relocating the company or even spinning out a part of your company, uh, we definitely apply and, and let us know that you have a plan and you can execute on that plan. Um, new or existing businesses engage in uh, PPE research and development. So R&D companies that have, uh, that can show a strong potential for commercialization. Uh, those I would encourage to apply. Um, and even, you know, new or existing businesses in emerging industries that demonstrate the ability to deliver innovative solutions. So again, that's where the other category comes in where, you know, right now we, we only see what we need, but, you know, we don't know what we don't know, right? If there's something that you think um, would be uh, beneficial to the state, um, definitely uh, apply and then see what our evalu evaluation committee uh, would say. And then, of course, uh, nonprofit businesses also can apply. For example, we've oh. seen some nonprofits that Good. have converted, you know, to making, you know, PPE masks. For example, 
um, they're eligible to apply also. Wow, that's great. Are there any specific types of companies that are ineligible to apply? Um, usually, so again, going back to the program goals, you know, it, it's, it's about increasing Hawaii's manufacturing capacity mm -hmm. of PPE. So things like distributors or companies that just import already made products and just reselling, those companies would be ineligible. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's some gray area where if you were bringing in a specific material that could then be used for value added manufacturing, like for example, if you're bringing a special type of material that can be used in masks, that other companies can use to, as part of their mask or their design, uh, those would potentially qualify. Uh, again, it's it's up for the committee to decide, but I would still encourage those type of companies to apply anyway. Huh. So I've heard of a company that is using like a, a material that's embedded with like silver fibers or particles. Would that be something that would qualify? Like even if you're just importing it? Yeah, produced yeah, I mean, by Hawaii manufacturers. Yeah, if um, I think for for that one, they would have to, you know, um, be specific in their their grant. You know, the I think it goes back to you know the, the intent of this grant is to support Hawaii manufacturers and help mm. establish a lo local supply chain uh, in response to you know the COVID nineteen public health emergency. So again, this grant isn't for distributors bringing in ready made products, but if they're adding value. Mm -hmm. um, materials being brought into the state to produce PPE, you know, I think we would ask them to, you know, just provide a clear and detailed justification on the budget narrative to support their request and also include how much of their product uh, would be made in Hawaii. Huh. Interesting. And how's it going so far, like with applications? Uh, we've, we've, uh, so one thing that's changed from our info sessions, we started this program uh, the end of August, we officially launched end of August. We, since then, the application um, online has been open uh, for submission. Um, we we have a pre-screening process that'll pretty much, you know, make sure everything was submitted. So that way when the review committee gets it, it's ready to go. Um, originally, we, we were thinking of doing three review sessions, but with all the applications that were coming in, you know, and, you know, to give companies the most amount of time to execute on their proposal, for their project, uh, we've decided to do weekly review meetings. So it's been going. You know, we we we're putting in the work, I think, to get the applications turned around as fast as we can. But you know, there, there's some things that you know we hope that um, companies can do on their part. You know, make sure their application is 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 uh, not messy, that is done properly, and that it includes expenses that are allowed. Because if you don't, then um, it'll just slow things down for us. And also, you know, and, and that'll just, you know, uh, cause a lot more work and, and less time for other companies to execute on their project. Wow, so that's good. I mean, you've been receiving a lot of applications? Yeah. More than expected? Yeah, yeah more than expected. I mean, it's, it's keeping us busy and it's good because, you know, we, we hope and intend to expend all the funds that we were appropriated mm -hmm. to support, you know, a lot of different businesses as part of our resilience strategy. So that the state, you know, has a lot more options available for PPE. Um, I, I would highly encourage um, companies to work with the Hawaii Small Business Development Centers. You know, they're they're available and set up to help companies uh, submit quality applications. You know, in, in addition to that, if you're on Kauai or Hawaii, you know, feel free to reach out to our uh, HDDC mentors, uh, Warren Doy and Tom Leonard, respectively. Um, they can also assist uh, with your application. Nice. Uh, Wayne, we're going to take a quick break. Oh, one last question. Quick question. So can companies expect like a week turnaround time as far as receiving back feedback? I think um, feedback usually once it's submitted, you know, we'll, we'll do the pre-screen. That usually takes about a week. Um, and then if everything's good, it, it'll go for review the next week. So I would think about two weeks minimum, mm -hmm. you know, just, just to be on the safe side. I, I don't want to set unreal expectations, but I think... Um, <laughs> That, that's that's doable. Okay, that's great. Um, we're going to take a quick break. This is International Hawaii with Wayne Laifan and Cindy, myself, my, I'm the host. Uh, we'll be right back. Thank you.
welcome back. This is International Hawaii. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. And our guest today is Wayne Layugan, Program Senior Program Manager at Innovate Hawaii with HTC. And we're talking about the PPE grant, which is PP, yeah, PPE grant for Hawaii manufacturers, which is an amazing opportunity. So I want to get the word out to as many people as possible. Um, so if you know anybody that has a manufacturing company or if you are a manufacturer, you have to take advantage of this if you can. Um, so Wayne was telling me about some of the requirements that companies need to hit and some of um, some of the things you need to, and some of the guidelines for the grant. Maybe you can go over some of those. Yeah, thanks, Cindy. Um, so, I mean, the, I think we mentioned earlier, right? The grants um, are up to 500,000, uh, but there is possibility to request more, but then, you know, there is more justification uh, needed in order for HGDC to approve that. Um, one other thing that I'd like to mention is, you know, grants uh, will be made to recipients with less than 50 employees. So again, it's focusing on small, medium-sized businesses. If you have more than 50, then you would be ineligible for this grant. Um, and then just to reiterate again, you know, everyone that, that's awarded, um, selected for award uh, needs to be in compliance with Hawaii Compliance Express. And the last thing and probably the most important thing is that all recipients must incur the cost. Um, so whatever you're awarded, you need to spend by December 30th of this year. So it's a real short time frame, And that's, that's because, you know, this is CARES Act funding and that's the deadline that's set by, you know, the, the feds. So it's not something that we, we can change at the state level. Uh, because this is CARES Act funding again, you know, all recipients must incur all funds by December 30th. When you say they have to incur the funds, does that mean you need to disperse the funds or they need to have spent the funds? Sorry. Uh, from, Just... Yeah, yeah. For, from my understanding, the, the companies that are awarded, um, so whatever funding they're awarded for their project, all that needs to be spent by the end of the year. So, I mean, it, it goes back again to, you know, making sure that companies understand what they're able to do, right? Because mm -hmm. if you come in for a whole bunch of money and then let's say you were approved and you don't execute on that money, you know, then, you know, the company's in trouble, we're in trouble. And then pretty much, you know, it's a lost opportunity, right? They could have gone to someone else. So. And they have to uh, refund the money or is it a reimbursable? Um, it, it's not reimbursable. So all, all the money that we're awarded is awarded upfront based on mm -hmm. the application and the proposal that they submit. So, I mean, just, just to be clear, you know, we're, we're not looking for an entrepreneur who has an idea to build a factory. You know, we're looking for companies who have uh, exper experience manufacturing products and currently have the capacity and the capability to manufacture PPE in Hawaii. So, I mean, some helpful hints for people thinking of applying, you know, uh, please make sure that you're specific and that you have an actionable plan. You know, pretty much your proposal needs to communicate to, to the committee that you are capable of doing this. You know, some questions to think about, you know, how will you help us when global supply chain is cut off? How will you help on all islands? Because this is a statewide program uh, or in your local co community. You know, you know, I think, I think uh, we're excited to, we're excited and looking for opportunities to make awards, but you know, we still need to do our due diligence. You know, so all we ask is to put yourself in our shoes, wear our hats, you know, help us understand your intent and that you can do what you pro propose to do. I saw there was um, a press release on a few of the companies that have received some of the funding. Could you kind of give us a review of those companies and what they qualified for, or what they're doing with it? Yeah, so I think one of them um, that just came up and uh, picked up their check recently was uh, Commando Composites. And so I think originally they were they were making you know uh, custom canoes and kayaks, uh, but then they converted their <clears throat> operation to make face shields. Wow. Yeah. So that's 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 one thing that they're doing. Um, another one is uh, Lani Kai Brewing. Um, they also converted you know their their they, they used to make alcohol. They, they still make alcohol, but this <laughs> time instead of making it into drinks, they they use the alcohol for hand sanitizers or hand rubs. So those are the kind of companies that we've awarded so far. Uh, we have we have more in the pipeline that are in process that have been you know selected for award. So stay tuned for you know more press releases and more info on companies that are getting the funding. 
Right. So can companies that have already converted or pivoted, can they get reimbursed for things that they've already done? So like, I, was Lanikai already doing that before the grant came out? Yeah, so they, they were already doing that previously. Uh, their, their grant application came in uh, for funding to expand their capabilities. So getting, getting more equipment so that they can produce more. Uh, so, so definitely if you're already doing it, you know, mm -hmm. technically you, you can apply, you know, I think you just need to explain a lot more um, what kind of benefit you'll bring to the state for stuff that you've already done um, and stuff that you plan to do. Oh, that's really good, that's great. And so is there an application deadline? Uh, technically, I think uh, we're hoping to get all applications in by the end of October. Again, because there is still, you know, the, the pre-screen process, the review process and the award process. Um, and realistically, I think if we were to go past that date, uh, that wouldn't give too much time for companies to execute mm -hmm. on their plans and expend the money by the end of December. So. Uh, we encourage companies, you know, again, to submit as soon as they can, but at the same time, we expect companies to do their homework and provide complete applications that are clear and, you know, that explain, right, what they want to do so that it's easier for us to see and understand what they're doing and also easier for us to make awards. Wow, that's, that's a fast timeline. <laughs> Maybe it's October. Yeah. yeah. Um, so as far as Innovate Hawaii, like what have you seen for Hawaii manufacturers? How have they been affected by the pandemic and the shutdowns? Like are, are they doing okay or? I think it depends. It depends, you know, which, which uh, industry you're looking at. So, you know, for, for a lot of companies that were dependent on tourism, you know, I think they're, mm -hmm. they're hurting now, right? So they're, they're looking, you know, if they're in the grocery stores or in the big box stores or have other uh, channels to make sales. I think they're they're hanging in there. But for companies that were solely dependent on tourism, I think they're hurting. Um, so you know we understand you know that you know so we're we're doing everything we can to help. Um, but but again, going back to before, right? We, we we all saw right. You know I think our goal is to help keep everyone you know healthy and make sure that everyone can open up safely. So I think by having this uh, PPE grant available, uh, we're allowing companies to manufacture PPE locally. That and that'll help, you know, just with with uh, finding supplies or things that are in critical need for reopening. And are there any other resources besides the the grant for manufacturers? Uh, specifically for manufacturers, right now, I think this might be the only one. Um, we do have uh, SBIR, but that's that's still uh, pending. We haven't released, um, you know, officially uh, yet on that one. Uh, but, but again, it's, it's more for uh, pre-manufacturing or R&D companies that are in, in that commercialization stage. Hmm. Wow, and that's more like innovative, like yeah. um, things to do with the pandemic itself, like with COVID-19 or that kind of thing? Um, it's different because every uh, federal agency um, has their own you know, solicitation or uh, things that they'd like companies to work on. So it's, mm -hmm. it's real specific and it's usually uh, cutting edge research, um, not something that would, would probably be ready for, you know, mass production yet. Mm. Um, Have you seen more of the agencies focusing on the pandemic? Um, yeah, definitely, definitely. I think there is a big focus, at least on the federal side, um, mm -hmm. to see what can be done with COVID-19 and ways to help, help um, you know, the general population or even you know, the world cope with cope with it. So it's it's ongoing, I think. Um, but but I'm, I'm real, I'm real glad that we have this program, because it's, it's just, you know, another way that we can help small medium sized manufacturers of Hawaii. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely. So maybe go, can you go over um, the contact information and where people can apply or find out more information about the grant? Yeah, sure. Um, so so again, all the info. Um, we have a long direct link, but I won't say that. The <laughs> easiest thing is just to go to um, htdc.org. Uh, once you get there, uh, we have a rotating banner, but it should be the first banner that you see. It's uh, Innovation Grants for PPE Supply Chain. You click on Learn More. That'll bring you to our PPE grant landing page. From there, you can look through um, previous recordings are available of our info sessions, 
presentation slides are available for you to review. There's, there's you know, um, um, more info on, you know, the, the grant guidelines and the process, uh, info on the CARES Act funding. And then at the very bottom, um, there's that apply now button that you can click on that'll bring you to the online application. And then again, any questions, any issues with the application, um, if you're unsure, if you qualify, anything like that, um, please email ppe at htdc.org. Um, we have a lot of people um, looking into that email. So that way, that, that's the best way to get uh, a response is through that email. Okay, great. And then I think we're gonna actually have the full link in the description below okay, when this video great. gets posted, yeah. <laughs> So I wanted to thank you for your time and for sharing about the PPE grant. This is like such a huge opportunity and I hope we're able to expend it all and not give it back because that would be horrible. <laughs> but thank you for joining me on International Hawaii and talking about the PPE grant, Wayne Laigon of Innovate Hawaii and HCDC. And we will see you next time on International Hawaii and Think Tech. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Cindy.